To set up the appropriate parameters to do the shoulder examination, I'm going to first select the correct probe. I will select the L145 linear array probe, the musculoskeletal application, and the shoulder preset. Further changes can be made by selecting the favorites drawer, and I can then make changes to the depth, the frequency, the overall gain, the number of focal points. So what we're going to do is start off with the short axis probe placement to visualize the biceps tendon in the bicipital groove. Patient position is as you see here with the patient is seated upright. The elbow is flexed at 90 degrees and the palm is turned up and it's a relaxed supination. We're going to hold the probe between our thumb and index finger and using the other fingers to stabilize the probe or place the probe in a short axis orientation in an anterior to posterior plane at the proximal portion of the shoulder and first what we want to visualize as we read our image from left to right will be the long convexity of the greater tuberosity of the humerus and the dip into the bicipital groove and then on the right side of the image is the lesser tuberosity of humerus and as we redirect the sound beam by toggling the probe we visualize the bright hyperechoic biceps tendon well situated in the bicipital groove. After obtaining the short axis view of the biceps tendon, we'll take the probe, place it in the short axis orientation, find the original view, and simply spin the probe 90 degrees into longitudinal orientation. And then we will first elongate the cortical margin of the humerus, the bright, thicker line at the bottom of the image, all the way across our image. And from this point, we will translate the probe medially to bring the probe over the bicipital groove to visualize the biceps tendon fiber. So now we're going to translate the probe medially very slowly. You'll notice the cortical margin of the humerus drops deeper and now the biceps tendon fibers will come into view very nicely following the contour of the humeral cortex, reading the image from left to right or cephalad to caudal. Two very important images in the shoulder examination protocol are the short axis and long axis images of the supraspinatus tendon. The proper position for the anterior rotator cuff imaging is going to be the modified crass position. So we're going to bring the patient's elbow back in extension and then a slight internal rotation and place their hand on their backside uh, with the palm facing forward. This position brings the rotator cuff, the supraspinatus tendon anterior out from under the cover of the acromion and also puts tension or stress on that tendon uh, which allows us to uh, pick up on some smaller abnormalities. So we're going to get our short axis image first. Place the probe parallel with the floor in a short axis orientation relative to the patient's body in neutral anatomic posture. Nice firm probe placement identifying the broad round convexity of the humeral head by toggling the probe, we want to identify the specific interfaces of the cortical margin of the humerus, the black anechoic layer of the hyaline cartilage, the supraspinatus tendon that wraps around the margin of the humeral convexity, and on top of the supraspinatus tendon, the potential space for the subacromial subdeltoid bursa, and then the deltoid muscle superficial to that. After producing the short axis image of the supraspinatus tendon, it's now time to take a look at the tendon attachment on the greater tuberosity of the humerus. So from our short axis probe placement, which we just described, we're now going to rotate the probe into a long axis, slightly oblique long axis probe placement to be in plane with the supraspinatus tendon attachment. Reading this image from right to left, we will demonstrate or visualize a flat slope of the greater tuberosity of the humerus and then a small transition to a convexity of the humeral head. The supraspinatus tendon tapers to a nice sharp point and this image is many times referred to as the bird's beak view of supraspinatus tendon. To visualize the posterior glenohumeral joint, we're going to ask the patient to internally rotate the arm and adduct tightly across the abdomen. They can grasp the opposing shoulder but as long as we have the elbow closely approximated to their side, it opens up the posterior joint space very nicely. Pro placement to visualize the posterior glenohumeral joint will be short axis, slightly oblique, slightly distal from the scapular spine. So we're going to place the probe in this area here, and what should come up immediately on their image, you will see the round convexity of the humeral head on the left, 
and to the right of that you will see the sharp point or apex of the glenoid on the right side of the image. Following the contour of the glenohumeral head is going to be the capsule and deep inside the articular margin between the humeral head and the glenoid is a peripheral margin of the posterior glenoid labrum.